On July 31st, 2014, the Nintendo Game Boy turned 25 years old, and with it, perhaps the most popular incarnation of Tetris. This portable puzzler moved millions of units of Nintendo Game Boys and introduced a nation to Tetris fever. In the quarter of a century since, the game has never grown stale thanks in part to multiple variations on the theme. Perhaps one of the most diverse ports of the game has been Tetris Party for the Nintendo Wii. This game had the classic mode as well as multiplayer online and offline, shadow mode, and the climber mode where you draw pieces to help a small climber out of the Tetris well, without actually being able to dictate his exact movements. That game was great, but it's not the version of Tetris I have spent the last week playing. That would be Structurus, an original adaptation of Tetris released in 2012 by Mr. Martin Hay and adapted to a tournament edition by Mr. Michael Sternberg. The reason you've never played or even heard of Structurus is because it is for the Apple II, an 8-bit computer produced by Apple Computer from 1977 to 1993, completely different from and incompatible with their line of Macintosh computers. Structurus does not use the joystick or the mouse, of which there are not many in 1977, so we'll be using the keyboard. The rules are, build up the Tetris blocks. You cannot rotate them. Evil Programmer launches blocks where you are to trap you. Don't get trapped. Finish rows to fall away, just like in the classic Tetris. Clear enough rows, next level, harder. Hit a key to begin the torture. Swell. So this is level 1, and you can see that I am the white brick at the bottom, and I have no gravitational constraints. I can move up, down, left, and right as I see fit. Now I can push each key individually, or I can hold down on the key, and the apple will eventually key repeat, and I can very quickly move left and right, but there is a slight delay before it takes effect. Now you can see a row just disappeared because I cleared a row. I completed it just like in Tetris. The pieces fall directly down wherever I am, so I do have some ability to guide their location. You'll also notice that they always fall perfectly to complete a row. There are never any gaps. This game is the best Tetris player I have ever seen. Now the row is very wide, and I have scored four, five rows now. You'll see that I have five points. I'm about to get my sixth point. After seven points, the level will have finished. Great job! The scoring system is an addition to Structurist that Michael Sternberg made for the tournament edition of Structurist. It's simply one point per row, no bonuses. He also eliminated the ability to start a level over. If I were to die on this level, I'd have to start back at level 1, instead of in the original version where I could have restarted level 2 and try again. The game gets harder in that you have to complete more lines every level. So as opposed to level 1 where I had to finish 7 rows, now I have to finish 9 rows to get to the next level. Let's see if I can get a long piece here. Perfect. Just what I needed. The game always sends you exactly what you needed while trying to kill you. The game also gets harder in that the width of the well diminishes each level. In a way that actually makes the game a little bit easier, because even though you have less space to move around and avoid the blocks, it also means you have to drop fewer pieces to complete a row, because there are fewer bricks across constituting each row. However, in the tournament edition, there are additional challenges. You may have noticed that the white brick fades in and out. It sort of blinks in and out. That's about every other frame you can see it. With level 10, that changes to one in every 15 frames that you can see your brick. So he's mostly invisible, and with just the occasional reminder of where he is. After level 20, it's one in every 30 blinks, so he's even more invisible. Now, you'll also notice that there is no soundtrack. There is one sound, and I'm going to kill myself right now so you can hear what it sounds like. Let this yellow brick push me down. Crush. Oops. Now, like I said, there is no restart, but there is a cheat code in the tournament edition where if you push 5 instead of new game or quit, you advance right to level 5. And since there is no soundtrack, I'm going to add one here to make the video a little more interesting. There isn't a lot more gameplay to add or to describe than what you've seen so far. I've already described how it gets harder. The game was reviewed in several publications that I'm aware of. Juice GS, the last remaining Apple II print publication, reviewed it. By which I mean, I reviewed it because I write for that magazine. And I gave it a good score. There was no numerical score, but the text of the review was definitely positive. And then Retro Gamer, out in the UK, not Retro, which was on Kickstarter, 
but Retro Gamer, which has been around forever and is up to like issue 100, has a series of short game reviews in the back of the magazine, and they gave this game a good score. I don't remember the exact score, but I'd guess it was in the 80s. The reviewer definitely liked it. One of the challenges I find is that I'm trying to stay near the top of the screen to avoid getting crushed at the bottom, but if there's a piece that hooks left or right unexpectedly, then I may get crushed. That's especially true with the pieces that, like that one, the red one. However, this game is color-coded so that a pink piece always has the same shape, and a certain shape always has the same color. So yellow is always that one with the three pieces with one in the middle, but you can't determine its rotation until it's fully on the screen. So there's still some element of prediction and guessing there. This game is written entirely in Applesoft Basic, except for one short routine which is in assembly language, which is inserted into the program using Slammer, a routine developed by Mr. Ivan Drucker, another Apple II programmer, that allows you to insert assembly routines into Applesoft Basic. I forget exactly what the assembly routine that Martin developed does, probably something to do with drawing the pieces on the screen or making everything fall down when you complete a line. Probably one of those. You can see my score right now is 25, because I have completed 25 lines across levels 5 and 6, and it just continues to go up and up. I have made it as far as level 17, starting from level 1 or 5, I don't remember which, but I had 249 points. I would have really liked to have had 255 or 256, but as I said, the game gets a lot harder after level 10. So I was really surprised that I made it that far with my pixel blinking in and out. The circumstances of that run were a tournament at Kansas Fest, an annual Apple II convention in Kansas City. Yes, there actually is an event where hobbyists and hackers of the Apple II gather from all around the world. We have people from Nebraska, Toronto, France. All around the world came to spend an entire week at Rockhurst University of Kansas City, Missouri, celebrating the Apple II. It's about $400 to register for this annual event, which gets you not only the event registration, but also a dorm room to stay in and access to the school cafeteria. So room, board, and event, all for just 400 bucks. Eh, you get what you pay for with cafeteria food, so remember that. And as far as the room, you don't sleep that much anyway. You're up all night hacking away. There was a tournament, whoa, hosted by Mr. Michael Sternberg, who created this tournament edition of Structurus. And I came in first place in the first round with 100 points. In the second round, I went up against last year's winner, Mr. Eric Rucker, not to be confused with Ivan Drucker, the assembly programmer previously mentioned. Eric is the 2013 world champion in Structurus, a tournament in which I failed miserably. And we went head-to-head -head for quite a while. We both made it to level 17, and he had a score just beneath mine, 230-something. Mucho gonzo. I came up victorious in the end of that second round, which put me onto the third round, where I went... You know, this game says that there's an evil programmer dropping bricks on you. I went up against the evil programmer himself, Mr. Martin Hay, who created Structurus. I felt a little bit like being in Tron, where I got to meet the user. And it, it was so sacrilegious in that I had to overthrow him. I felt a little guilty about that, but I also thought, this is what I this is what Martin created the game for. He wanted us to play and enjoy it and get better at it. So I defeated the evil user, the evil programmer who'd been trying to crush me all these years, and I went home with the championship mug that Mr. Sternberg created just for this tournament and awarded to the winner. So I very much thank everybody who contributed to that event and made it possible. The contributions of the mug, the Git tournament itself, which takes time to organize and run it, the game by Martin, the competition by Eric, the routine by Ivan, it was just such a fun time, and I'm very happy to, to continue playing this game. I don't play it a lot outside of tournaments. In fact, I hadn't played it at all because Kansas Fest 2013 and 2014 because I was so embarrassed by how badly I done, had done it in 2013. I don't know how or why I got better after that. In fact, Sternberg noticed that I had changed my gameplay style, which was very observant of him because I wasn't even aware of it. Apparently, I changed how I pressed the keys or how often I pressed them not counting on the key delay. Oh dear, that's- oh no! Crap! Oh well. Well, that's the end of my Let's Play. I did not throw that game like I did the beginning of this Let's Play. I really did make it as level 9 with 77 points. I was hoping to show you level 10 with the blinking cursor, but that was not meant to be. This game is entirely open source. 
you can play and download both the original edition and the tournament edition, courtesy Bitbucket. There are links in the video description to where you can download them. You can also get a disc image that is compatible with almost any Apple II emulator, so you can play this game without using a real Apple II. In this video, unlike my previous one of Retro Fever where I used a real Apple II, this time I'm using an emulator, Sweet 16 for the Macintosh. It's just a lot easier to record. So thank you very much for watching this Let's Play of Structures. I hope you have gained some appreciation for the wonders of the Apple II in the 21st century. Tetris forever!